Hey guys, welcome to another episode of LFA Shop Shop. This video, we're going to talk about what I did in 2023 and what I plan to do in 2024. So before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that there is merch for sale, finally. So a lot of people have been asking for it, and I finally bit the bullet and organized it. So you're able to get shirts like this, which are what I normally wear, but in a much higher quality. So the ones I normally wear are pretty thick and they're hardy for when I'm working in the shed, grinding, sparks, whatever. So now you can get a nice comfy version like this on the website. You can get long sleeve, short sleeve, and hoodies. So I haven't got a hoodie yet, but I need to see what that's like. The cat's helping me with this apparently. This is Rufus, he's very cute, he's very dumb. So there's also a couple of other designs that are coming. So we've got one with the Corolla on the front, we've got one with El Jefe's Chop Shop on the front like this, and then the Corolla on the back. And then there is air fresheners and lanyards coming soon, and stickers. So check it out, I'll put the link in the description. If you can head over there, that'd be great. It is gonna be a big help to the channel and we're gonna put all that money back into projects and make some sillier things. Okay, so I've got here my phone with a list of all of the stuff that I did in 23, or all of the episodes that I put up. So let's start off with the Leyland. So the cab over green big truck, as I refer to it. Uh, we got that thing running, we drove it from the side of the shed into the shed, we cut it up. A lot of people were really annoyed about that, but that's what we needed to do. So that's been in storage for a little over a year now. And the plan is to hopefully get that thing in the shed soon. I'll talk that, about that later. Then we worked on the Toy Oase for a fair while. So that thing is super close. Again, I'll talk about that later. But we got it to run and drive. And we got the exhaust done, we got the cooling system done, and everything is coming along. Then I bought a CRV from auction. So the plan with this thing, which you have now seen the Camry, the plan with the CRV was to put all the all drive stuff into the Camry. Um, unfortunately, the rack position is not very great and the gearbox will hit the rack. So without moving the rack up like three inches, it's not really gonna work or moving the motor down a few inches. I'll look into that later, I guess, and I've still got it there. But at the moment, I'm just gonna call it the CRV or CR Vert and it's just a donor car for whatever I end up making. So then you know, there's a bunch of yard stuff. So we put the concrete in, we got the fence up, we did the gravel and the back half of the yard and everything's just a whole lot nicer, so it's so much easier to maintain now. Um, it's just so much better. In saying that, there's obviously a heap more left to do. It's very distracting because the cats are sitting right there. Then we've done a bunch of maintenance things on Emily's CRV, so that's a good little daily for her, and we've done a bunch of stuff on that, which has been great, kept it running and driving, and solved all of its problems. We also put the K10 on the dyno, which was quite funny. Um, it made a whole lot more power than I thought, and since then, the Dino guys have upgraded their software, or updated their software, and they reckon that it would be much more accurate now than it was then. Um, they seem to think it was pretty accurate then, but it's just a lot of power for a very stock motor, so... Maybe? Maybe not. Then I started with the bad decisions, and I bought the Honda Accord half cut, or the full shell with the front engine and everything in it. Cut that up, and obviously have used that in the Camry. So that's pretty cool. Um, that actually worked quite well. Um, I was really happy with that whole setup. The Camry motor and gearbox and everything just went really well. It's probably one of the easiest swaps I've ever done. Aside from the wiring, which my mate Richo did, and we couldn't find wiring diagrams for the Accord for free. They were all $25 a day, and because it's you know pretty lengthy process, um, it was going to end up reasonably expensive, so Richo just worked it out, which he's an absolute wizard, so that was pretty cool. And then, for some reason, the Camry that I have, or the Vienta that I have, is a some special model, and it has an old engine, but it's end of run, and there was a bunch of changes, and none of the wine diagrams we could find actually suited the car, which was super painful, but Richo got through it, so we've only got a few little problems to fix on that still now. But other than that, it's worked really well. The axles will be getting upgraded. I have snapped two, um, one within 800 meters of driving it, and one uh, about a week or two after that when I was snapping second and then snapping axles. Then after that, we had the VK and the XC content. So we were working on that for about six months in the background, 
trying to hide it from you guys, which was pretty tricky. Um, but the VK went really smoothly, that was super good. Um, everything went quite well, and it was actually really quite nice to drive on the way back as well. The video hasn't done all that well, which is a bit of a pain, so if you haven't watched the VK revival video and the like digging into the history video, go have a look at those, they're pretty cool. I think they're good, but that's just my opinion. And then there's the XC Fairmont that we did. So that thing fought me and fought me and fought me, or I should say us, um, Jackson was helping me, and everything we touched on that was just broken. Everything was miserable. So the video has done really well. There's a lot of people telling me that I don't know what I'm doing, which, fair enough. But that car was quite annoying. This is our other cat, this is Milton. He's scared of everybody, but he doesn't know you over here. And he's staring at the camera. So the plans for 2024. Normally I do this video right first thing of the year. So I have done a little bit already this year. We've got the Camry sort of finished off and driving. Um, we're still gonna work on that in the background. I'll eventually put another episode out of us fixing all the little teething issues, but that's for the most part done for now. Eventually I would like to turbo it and I would like to make it silly fast, um, but that's probably not gonna happen this year. I've also worked on Emily's CRV this year. So I did a timing chain on that, which you would have seen maybe last week and just refreshed a lot of the front of the engine and cleaned a bunch of stuff. And it seems to have fixed the problem, which is excellent. Um, it was throwing a knock sensor. I think what's happened is the chain stretched slightly and that chain was occasionally hitting one of the guides because the guide at the top actually doesn't touch the chain. So maybe if it was loose enough, it was touching. I'm not really sure, but it seems to have fixed the problem, which is really nice. Then the next thing I did is we've cleaned the shed out so that Richo can get his car in here. So he's got an R31. Um, I'm not gonna tell you much about that because it's a later problem. He's gonna work on that in the shed. He hasn't got anywhere to store it that he will work on it. Um, and if it's here, I can pester him and say it's in my way and he can come work on it. So we cleaned out all the core and panels, moved them to get his car in. So now all the core and panels are right in the way. So what I've spent the last few days doing is building a office upstairs out of the core and panels. So the plan is to have a couch up there and a computer and stuff, a TV, all the things you could need so that I can stay awake uh, during the night, getting ready to stay up for night shift. So I work night shift a fair bit. So it would be really good to have somewhere I can sleep during the day and also be up all night making noise or away from the noise during the day. So that is currently under progress and is gonna be a video in a week or two. It's just gonna be a like a silent film type video just all hyperlapse of just all my clips jammed together, all in fast forward. So once that's done, there's a surprise car for Jackson. So he has had so many golfs over the years and doesn't have one currently. He hasn't had one for probably five years. So I've found a, a little bit more than a rolling shell. Um, it's pretty much stripped and it's very damaged, but it's good enough for what I'm thinking of doing, which is to set it up as much as we can, fix as much as we can, and then get the engine in it running. I've got a turbo to put on it, which is gonna be hilarious because the turbo is like this big. And then the plan is to just drive it around the backyard and enjoy it. So I know that Jackson would like to put a VR5 in a Golf. So they're from like a Bora or I think some Golfs. I'm not 100% sure, I'm not a Volkswagen guy, but the plan is to put a VR5 into the shell um, and make it run and drive and make a bit of a track car type thing. And then eventually, hopefully he can find a decent shell that is either freshly painted or ready for paint or whatever. And we can make a nice road car with the VR5 swap and with all the bits. So that'll just be something more so for him to play with, um, but we'll film it all the way along and I'll just help him out when we can. Instead of him helping me all the time, I can help him, which sounds like a great idea. So he currently doesn't know about that. He's finding out tomorrow and you guys are finding out in about a week. So he will know by the time this video is out. Then the plan is to get Emily's Sior out of the little shed, put it in the big shed and finish the thing. So it's been on standby and now she's ready to do it again. So it's got a K3 1.3 litre swapped into it. So what we need to do is the wiring, the exhaust, the intake and everything. And then I'm just gonna go over the whole thing, make sure I haven't forgotten anything and just tidy it all up and then finish off whatever else we can find. So. It should be a reasonably short project, but in saying that, it could be many months. Who knows? We'll see. Then once Emily's car's out of the way, I'd like to get the high ace and get that thing back up and ready for rego. So that requires a turbo. So while I'm building Emily's car, I'll get a turbo. 
I'll get all the bits I need and then we can just do that in sort of one episode, go through Regency, get it all signed off and get another car running and driving, which would be really good because I'm starting to run out of cars. Now the K10 has been defected, I guess. Um, yeah, I got a letter to say that they wanted to inspect the engine number, which if I go and do that, it will be defected by then. Um, and it runs out of rego today. So that thing's gonna sit there for a long time and I'll deal with it in like a year and get it back up and running. Then my big plan for this year is to try and finish off the toy ways. So we need to do the wiring, we need to do seat belts, we need to do a bit of bodywork and stuff, um, just like floors and all that sort of thing. Get it running and driving. There's something still wrong with the brakes. They are horrible. They work well once they're working, but you have to pump them like five or six times for them to actually get pressure. So the rears are the similar to FJ40 Land Cruisers. They're drums that are like this big. Um, so I don't know if we've got enough fluid movement to actually operate the rear brakes. And if they're not getting pressure, then the fronts probably aren't getting pressure. I'm not really sure. So I need to look into that. Might be as easy as bleeding them again. It might be a new master cylinder. It might be residual valves. It might be proportioning valves. I'm not really sure. So I'd like to look into that. But then the major project for this year is something that I've been waiting for for so long and I really, 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 I can't stress that enough, want to get into this thing and that is my truck. So I bought my Isuzu 2007 Isuzu NPR 200 um, a few years ago now and I ended up dailying it for probably two years. So what I'd like to do is rip the tray off of that thing. I've got a service body for it, so like a big cupboard. Um, I'm gonna cut that, widen it, extend it, put it on the truck, and then I wanna rip the cab off and put my old Leyland cab on. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. I've been looking forward to it for a few years now, and it'd just be really nice to get it done, or at least started. I know it's gonna be a big project, and I know it's gonna take a lot of time, but it'd be nice to actually get it started this year, hopefully within a couple of months. But Emily's cars comes first. The Sior comes first. This cat will not leave me alone. So on the subject of the truck, I've got another will it run type video uh, coming in in a couple of weeks. So I've got another truck, the same as mine. So same as the Leyland FG. I believe this one's an Austin. Um, so it's a little bit older, but it's the same sort of thing. So I bought that for parts and I'm gonna part it out because someone wants the engine, the gearbox and the diff. So my plan, get your bum out of the camera. So my plan is to try and make it run, make it drive, have a bit of fun, and then pull it apart and get rid of what I don't need. So that should be a pretty quick little job, but it's all work. There's a lot of work. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully I can get all that stuff done this year. See how we go. But apparently I need to feed the cats. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week. You're a goose. You're a goose. Here it goes.